Chapter 3, A Whole New World. Now, Langazella. With all the line of Evie Levy's gaze across the hotel lobby, your heart thumping. If you do everything I say, I might let you have some dessert tonight. Yes, mistress. What are they doing here? I can't believe the nerve of that a-hole. This is just like him. I bet he knew I'd be staying here, and he wanted me to see them together. Do you want to confront him? No way. That's what he wants. For me to make a scene. For everything to be to center around him. Your eyes follow them as they head into the hotel's restaurant, Pat trailing after the dom like a puppy. Whoever went to a hotel for, <laughs> for a meal or dessert, come on, let's get you out of here. He wraps a strong arm around your shoulders as he curls you against his chest. You can't help but lose yourself in his embrace. The strength radiates off of him, resonating in every part of your body. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what's gotten into me. I'm usually in better control of myself. Control is my thing, not yours. When you're with me, it's safe to let go. Suddenly, aware of how close you're standing, on how close you like it, you force yourself to take a wide step back. Feeling better? Yes, thank you. Catch a glimmer of movement to your right. Pat's Tom is heading towards lobby bathroom alone. At least I was feeling better. I can't help remembering the look on her face when you walked in on her and Pat. My, my, things have finally gotten interesting. Are you gonna join us? Oh. If I let you go into the bathroom, are you going to start a cat fight? No way, that woman makes a habit out of whipping people. I wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> but even as you speak, you start moving towards the bathroom. This might be your only chance to ask her questions without Pat around to influence her answers. Closure is important. If I want to talk to her, it's now or never. Confront Pat's Dom! You lift your chin, resolute. I'm going in. You take a step toward the ladies' room, and Levy's low chuckle gives you pause. Do you think it's a bad idea? <laughs> on the contrary. I was just thinking of what I'd give to be a fly on that wall. But I'll stand guard instead. It push through the bathroom store to find Pat Stahm standing in front of the mirror, touching up her lipstick. Although she pauses when she sees you in the reflection of the mirror, she continues what she was doing. I thought that was you over by the elevators. I want to ask you a few questions. It's the least you can do after you humiliated me like that. Nadam puts away her lipstick, tucks a strand of hair behind her ear before turning to face you. You don't know anything about my line of work if you think that's what humiliation looks like. It's true. That's not the point. Trishana. What? That's her name. My name is Trishana. Well, Pat calls me mistress, but I don't think you're ready for that yet. Is this funny to you? I never make jokes about my life or the people I invite to share it. You struggle to come up with a response, your whole body flushing from top to bottom. She sees it and takes pity on you. Oh, sweetie, I know it won't mean much to you, at least not right now, but I am sorry you walked in on us like that. But not that you slept with a married man? It's not my job to ask, so I didn't. Until you appeared in the doorway, I didn't know he was married. Not that I'm surprised. Bat seems like the cheating type. I can read most of my subs in a single glance. She makes the attempt. Now her sharp gaze raking over you. Tell me. What do you see when you look at me? You notice that you're looking. A wicked, delighted smile curves her lips. Are you sure you want to know? You force her chin high. There's something mesmerizing about her stare, but also something a little cold. I'm not afraid of you. Yes, yes you are. You're terrified of me. Of what I could do to you. Of what I make you feel. Lump starts to form in your throat, but you refuse to look away. She only smiles deeper. But even though your little heart is pounding in your chest, you won't give in easily. Your challenge, Ella Rancic, but a willing one. You have no idea how appealing and rare that combination is. As much as appreciation, 
As you appreciate her honesty, you're starting to feel out of your depth. You can't decide if you're relieved or upset when she starts putting her makeup away. You know, for a wronged woman, you see I'm a lot less interested in your ex's infidelity and a lot more interested in what I do. I'm... Willing to admit I'm curious. This is all new to me, but I want to learn... The words every dom longs to hear. The brushes past you towards the door. She pauses as she reaches your side. You shiver. She gently drops one long fingernail down the side of your face. You're welcome to visit my dungeon whenever you decide you're ready to indulge. I don't bite unless you ask. You're not unable to do anything else. You follow her back into the hotel lobby, your mind and body in a whirl, and she notices Levy standing guard nearby. Well, well, you didn't tell me you were already taken. I'm none. Levy Thorne has quite the reputation, and for someone as fresh and innocent as you, he's gonna eat you alive. Lucky thing. I told you it's not like that. It's obvious she doesn't believe you. She casts one look at you before she heads back towards the restaurant to meet Pad. You rejoin Levy and start walking towards the elevators. You aren't sure why, but you suddenly feel very annoyed with him. How'd it go? Why didn't you tell me you knew Trishana? I don't. Not really. I've seen her around, but we've never officially met. Until you pointed around, I didn't know she was the dumb handling Pat. You stab the elevator button and tap an impatient foot until it arrives. What did she say to you in there? You seem awfully riled up. She said you're gonna eat me alive? Well, she's not wrong about that. Your legs are unsteady as the elevator finally arrives. You step inside, but Levy doesn't join you. Instead, he leans to press the button for your floor, then pauses near your ear. Remember what I said to you before. You gulp and feel the scruff of his jawline as he presses a slow, soft kiss against your cheek. Sweet dreams, Ella. I'll call you when I have news. You hear from Abby a lot quicker than you expected. No sooner do you get up out of bed the next day than your phone pings with an incoming text. Pack your things and check out of your hotel. Um, good morning? Don't make me tell you a second time. You have 20 minutes. Meet me at this address. Yes, yeah, sir. I'd be careful throwing that word around if I were you. Don't play with fire unless you want to get burned. You shiver with anticipation and delight. Any burn by Levy is starting to have definite appeal. You lose no time tossing your belongings into the suitcase and scooping up your toiletries into a bag. My whole life reduced to a few portable totes. How's that for pathetic? Drawing a deep, resolute breath, you try not to focus on how sparse and impersonal the hotel room feels. Things are bound to get better soon, right? Your ride share is waiting for you at the entrance to the hotel. The driver starts towards the mystery address, and you watch the city blur by through the window. This is awfully nice area town. As you step out of the car, you spot a familiar face waiting for you. Hey, I know you. You were with Levy when we had dinner. It's nice to officially meet you, Miss Rancic. I'm James Anderson, Mr. Thorne's bodyguard. Um, nice to meet you too. I guess this means I'm in the right place. Right place, right time. Just how Mr. Thorne likes it. Follow me. Anderson holds the door open to you. Uh, what is this place? Unfortunately, I'm under strict instruction not to say. But between me and you, I think you'll enjoy it. To your surprise, Anderson leads you to an elevator and scans a special key. You bypass all the floors and shoot straight up to the top. The penthouse? The elevator doors slide open, revealing... Don't you ever change clothing. Welcome to your new home, Ella. Let me... I don't understand. What's to understand? You need a place to stay, and I'm offering you one. He offers a key out to you. 
Go ahead. It's all yours. I have several properties in the city, many of them are unoccupied as they're being renovated or waiting for new tenants. After your unpleasant encounter last night, I assumed you'd want to get out of that hotel and somewhere Pat won't know about. You cross to the windows, taking in the stunning view of the city spread out before you. This place must cost a fortune. I can't even begin to... There's no rent. You can stay here free of charge. But... This is as much for you as it is for me. I need no distractions during the divorce proceedings. Having someplace settled to live will help with that. Let me... Thank you. I'm grateful to have you in my corner. I reach out to put a hand on his arm, but he steps out of reach. It's not a big deal. I told you I always take care of my clients. He shakes his head before leading you on a tour of the apartment. Your first stop is the master bedroom. You aren't sure why, but it's uh, not quite what you expected from a man like Levy. The mattress might be a little firm for your taste. Be sure uh, to swap it out if you want. Pe wait, 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 wait. People swap out mattresses? Just like that? Like a, I want a new shirt swapping it. Isn't this when you're supposed to say, this is where the magic happens? I would accept the only magic in here are the remote control blinds. Casually dismissing the room, Levy pushes open the door to adjoining bathroom. Interesting, he's not his usual self. Hmm. This is a fully jetted tub and a waterfall shower. Don't be afraid to use both or invite anyone you want to share. I don't have anyone to invite. Give it time. Brush of heat moves over the surface of your skin. The sooner you get away from the intimacy of this particular room, the better. It's a bathroom. Calm down. Can we see the kitchen next? Mm, scared, Ella. I don't blame you. Oh my god, I can't get a read on either of these. He turns and leaves you, standing alone in the middle of the bathroom, and you have to hurry to keep up with his long, purposeful strides. I'm not much of a cook, but the kitchen should be fully stocked. You're taking the high-end appliances, immaculate countertop with a nod. Considering how expensive everything is furnished, you don't doubt you'll find everything you need. Don't be afraid to make this place your own, unpack your things, redecorate, and have your guests over. Until the day you move out, it's your home. Despite his words, you're careful not to touch anything, fearful of upsetting the pristine perfection of it all. Every room feels like it came out of a magazine. I mean it, Ella, if I come over here in a week's time and if you made yourself at home, I won't be happy. Mm. Mm. Let's see. Let's let's test the waters. What makes you think I care about your happiness? I'd be startled into a sharp laugh when he turns towards you. Something dark glitters in his eyes. There you go. Playing that dangerous game again. You swallow convulsively, caught in the gaze like a rabbit in a snare. Desperate for space to breathe, you point towards a heavy wooden door hidden behind the kitchen. What's in that room? Levy's look only intensifies. You try the handle, and you find it's locked. Are you sure you want to know the answer to that? Even though something deep in your stomach tells you that you aren't sure, you nod. Don't say I didn't warn you. He extracts a key from his personal key ring and slips it into the lock. Mysterious key. Yeah, that's why he had no attachment to the other bedroom and uh, didn't make a pun. You take a step forward, taking in the stark, dimly lit room with a thumping heart. What is this place? This is where the real magic happens. Although the space has all the makings of a um, dungeon, it's mostly stripped bare. Strategically placed metal rings embedded in the walls hinted a darker purpose, but for now they hang unoccupied. And the most prominent piece of the furniture is the bed that seems empty and beckoning in the middle of the room. If everything Levy says is true, this room is mine now. My dungeon, my playroom, my bed. The pulse and mind race with possibilities. You've unlocked the four-poster bed in your dungeon. Yeah, for the love of- You'll have a chance to collect special items. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, collect them all to get bonuses throughout the story and unlock a special scene at the end of the book. You turn to find Levy leaning in the doorway, his arms crossed as he watches you take it in. 
Is it what you were expecting? I have you change the sheets. He releases a low chuckle that shakes you to your core. Yes, Ella. I always take care of my things once I'm done playing with them. From the way he hides you up and down, you get the feeling he isn't just talking about his possessions. Stabbing into the room, Levy allows fingers to trail along the bed frame. Some of the things I've done in this very room, on this very bed. He grips the wood frame with a sudden unyielding clinch of his fist. Your innocent little mind wouldn't be able to handle it. You can't seem to tear your gaze from here where Levy touches the bed frame. There's so much strength in those fingers, so much determination. You wouldn't help but imagine what it would feel like to have those hands stroke your bare skin or to strike it. My mind isn't nearly as innocent as he'd like to believe, and it's high time he realizes that. Ask him for details. I'm a grown woman who was married for eight years, Levy. I know a thing or two about what happens in a room like this. No, you don't. His rich, cocky chuckle fills the air. <laughs> if you had any idea what went on inside this room, you wouldn't be standing there looking at me like that. Like what? Like a deer caught in the headlights. He draws closer, careful to stop long before you're within his reach. His whole body radiates with powerful energy. Like you want me to take you across my knee? Like you're begging for it? Since that's exactly what you do want, you grow hot and angry all over. You don't know everything about me. He shakes his head and crosses his arms, amusement quirking his lips. Sorry, Ella, I'm not buying it. You're ready for this kind of honesty. I haven't done butt stuff. <sighs> I'm Picard face palming right now. <sighs> That's. Yeah, no, that's not a woman of regality. Um, or anything above the IQ of 60, so let's move on. Um. Eh, we'll go with the middle one. I haven't been living under a rock for 30 years, you know. I know what gets a man like you hot and bothered. Oh, yeah. What do you think does it for me? A cheerleading uniform, a plaid skirt, a pair of fuzzy handcuffs. Yeah, no, it doesn't do anything for us. The hot, liquid look in his eyes causes your insides to quiver, but you refuse to back down. You're the one with all the experience, you tell me. You take a deep breath, gathering yourself. I want to know more, Levy, and I don't have anyone else to ask, please. Something about the simple request breaks his resolve, and he sighs. I'm gonna regret this later. Fine. Stand facing that wall over there, hands above your head, palms flat against the wood. What? Why? You asked. Now do as I say. Because I told you to, because if I have to look at your face when I tell you what I've done, I won't be held responsible for my actions. Gulping across the room, standing exactly how Levy ordered you to. You can't see him, but there's no denying his presence behind you. Good girl. Now don't move. His voice sounds over your right shoulder. No part of his body touches yours, but the warm whisper of his breath sends shivers up and down your spine. You remember that riding crop? Yes. That's where I'd start. Not on your bare back or even the curves of your ass, but between your legs. You're surprised. He lightly nudges your feet apart before stepping back. Ear felt. Feeling exposed, open, alone. Slow at first, testing your reactions, flicking the leather against the soft skin of your inner thigh. I'm starting to get the picture. Yeah, there was a lot of talk. No actions, not really, and uh, but a lot of talk that still YouTube would be mad about. The picture might be worth a thousand words, but I prefer to hear you say them anyway, which part appeals to you most. I like the idea of letting you decide. Like you said, I don't have any experience with this. I'd rather put myself in your hands. The burst of something hot and dangerous takes over Levy's expression. Sweeter words have never been spoken. 
Nubby lifts a hand as if to reach for you, but instead of making contact, he flicks off the lights and strolls out of the room. You follow him, the dungeon seems safe while he's in it, but you aren't sure you want to spend much time there alone. Pretty now that he's planted all these images in my mind. I hate to leave just when it's starting to get good, but I'm needed back at the office. Remember what I said, make this place your own. I will, I promise. I don't know how I'll ever be able to thank you. You don't need to bother. Nubby nerd nods curtly and leaves before you can say another word. You're so surprised by the sudden about face that you don't notice the entryway table until he's long gone. On this polished marble surface it sits a vase of fresh flowers and... I'm gonna make myself at home. That night. You toss and turn on your new bed in your uh, new apartment. Everything is so luxurious and comfortable, but you can't fall asleep. You thump your pillow, searching for uh, in vain for a cool spot when you realize the problem isn't your bed. It's you. This is all Levy's fault. Everything, he's everywhere inside this apartment. No matter which way I turn, I can still see him, still smell him. It's the point. You're pulling your head back with a groan, thinking about Levy isn't helping you feel more settled. If anything, the room is only heating up. And so am I. You stare up at the ceiling, allow your hands to trail down over your body, skimming over your bare skin, the heated curves. Your touch is rather light, but it wouldn't take much to increase the pressure. It's not like I'm getting any sleep as it is. Maybe I should indulge just a little. <laughs> Oh, fantasize about Levy, really? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to share this diamond choice much. Not on YouTube, at least. Playing happily, you tip your head back and arch your back into the mattress. I'm all on this big, empty apartment. I can make as much just noise as I want. Close your eyes, allow your mind to travel all the places it's been longing to go. To the solid, impenetrable walls of the dungeon room. To the big bed with its hooks and ties. That is literally just a few feet away and you could go into, but you know, I digress. To Levy standing over you, a smile twisting the hard features of his face. You take your lip between your teeth, hesitating over the last one. As much as you long to slide your hands under your pajamas with the stern, brooding image of Levy, you aren't sure how far to take the fantasy. Once I start down that road, there'll be no turning back. How's that possible? There isn't even anyone in that room with me. I... Mm. This one's a tough one. You slowly your legs to a comfortable position. Your hand flat on your belly as your breathing slows. I don't care what I have to do to make Levy take me seriously. I'm ready for the real thing. And instead of feeling settled and sleepy, you're now more worked up than before. If I have to keep sharing an apartment with that dungeon, I'm going to need some sleeping aids. Your phone chimes with an incoming text. Thinking of you and the dungeon. In your sudden shock, the phone practically leaps from your hand. It's almost as if he knew what I was doing. Because he does. Your fingers tremble as you respond. I did more than think about it. Did you touch yourself? Oh, okay. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of editing in this shit. I'm gonna be real. Can I hate YouTube? You put your phone down with a sigh. Your body's starting to thrum all over again. I'm not prepared to handle Levy, a man like Levy, so why can't I think of anything else? Your phone buzzes again, and you steal yourself as you glance at the screen. There, you, you get to see, like, past some of the shit. Sleep well, Ella. That's an order. For once, complying with Levy's command is easy, exhausted by the emotional day and dreaming of Levy's smile. This time, you fall asleep as soon as your head hits the pillow. The next day. You and Mallory are enjoying a quick break after all the mayhem at the newest campaign initiative. Girl, I'm exhausted. 
I heard your coverage of Lewis's Children's Hospital appearance uh, was a huge hit. Oh, it has, but that's not why I'm tired. Have you ever tried the butter churner position? The what? You choke on a sound that's half gasp, half laughter. You mean like in bed? Well, we weren't in bed, but yes, I swear my boyfriend was almost hitting my cervix. He was in that deep. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Mmm, boy. <clears throat> I am trying to be more adventurous. My life during my marriage wasn't very impressive. I'm trying to branch out. I don't think you can borrow her boyfriend. What's on your to-do list? Or should I ask, who is on your to-do list? I don't have a list, per se. You're just about to muster up enough courage to ask if Mallory knows anything about, uh... And when Emerson and a man you don't recognize approach. There she is, I, like, just like I told you. These two make up our girls' club. You can always hear them giggling back here. Are you Ella Rancic? Yes, can I help you? The man thrust a large vanilla envelope at you. You take it from him, blinking and bewildering it. You've been served. Welcome to your divorce. Meh. All right, without further ado, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down to the description below, links to social media, Discord, and if you like to support me and my content, please make sure to hit that like button and make sure to hit that subscribe. So I'll go ahead and say this real quick. Oh, boy. Um, Sorry that I'm having to edit it so much, guys. Um, You know, and edit out uh, what you guys might find good or bad. Uh, long story short, that's the state of YouTube, right? Um... A lot of YouTube creators are not going to be covering this book at all. They're not even touching it with a 10-foot pole. And, uh, you know, I'm at least willing to at least give you, I guess, snippets, right? It's a lot better than the one creator I saw who put up, like, 10 to 30 second clip and they're like, come check out my content somewhere else. No, I'm like, at least I'm giving you something to at least get you guys, like, knowing if this book is good or not, right? Um, again... Let me know in the comment section below. I could put up uh, the unedited crap on, uh, like, say, Patreon or something, you know. Um, that way, you know, you get to watch an unedited and, and everything, but you can support the work that I do for the work that I put up, for the time that I'm taking to upload the unedited stuff for, for as little as a, as, a, as a McDonald's cup of, like, small coffee, I think. Like, a buck. Like, let's be real, okay? That's little, like, as little as it goes, right? So, yeah, be greatly appreciated. Um, and as for the comment about, um, you know, wasting time with Pat and your marriage, eh, I mean, you, you had a, a great thing, right? Clearly, you had a great thing up until that moment that you walk in, right? You could be completely happy, complacent, and whatnot. And clearly, she's never longed for another thing ever in her entire life, right? So, she was happy with her marriage. Clearly, you know, there's one person who was not happy. Uh, so, let me just go ahead and give you a little piece of advice. <clears throat> communication is key. Literally and figuratively, communication is key. That's it. That's how to save your marriages, that's how to save your relationships, that's how to save everything. Communication is key. If you want more spice, if you're looking for more, if you're looking for more than vanilla or whatever, communication is key. You know, um, yeah. You know, this is, this is the, this book covers a little bit of the wild side, right? A lot of people are fine with vanilla, right? But this does cover a little bit more of the wild side and things that may, some people may think is ridiculous, but it is true. Um, yeah, without further ado, thanks for watching. Catch y'all later. Peace out.